Hello everyone and welcome back to the Little Blue Fly. If this is your first time visiting, welcome and I invite you to subscribe to my channel. It is as simple as pressing that subscribe button, tapping that bell and making sure to select all. Now lately, I, I want to thank all of you so much. I have been getting um, many more likes um, on my videos and comments and this is fabulous for the little blue fly. If we can continue to hit that like button and leave comments if you wish, we can really, really, really help this channel gain some ground and that would just it would make me so, so happy. So keep on doing what you're doing. And I thank you so, so much for the wonderful comments. Now, today I am going to be sharing um, well, many different things. So um, I'm going to be giving tutorials on how to put simple fall placements together. Um, some fabulous finds that I just came across for fall. So, well, just that being said, let's begin, shall we? Uh, so I'm going to display, well, I'm going to try my best to display everything on this small table right here because I just can't go into the kitchen to do it right now. I'm gonna start things off with this. It's my latest find. It came from, look at this frame. It's just aged beautifully. I'm gonna add a little something to it though, but this was purchased from the Minuteman Mini Mall. The manager there, she, she does all this artwork with her two little sweet hands. She is, incredible at her art form she actually used for the backdrop a vintage potato sack and she even pointed out she goes look this one has a patch on it right here i said oh my gosh i must have the one with the patch so she used that as the canvas and then did this fabulous painting of mums and pumpkins. So if you are in the coal pepper area in Virginia, it's called Minuteman Mini Mall. Just ask for the manager. There's her little signature right down there at the bottom. And she will be able to help you if you have any certain requests. Let her know the little blue fly sent you. So what I decided to do on this frame, I wanted to get um, the, distress, the distressed color. See, it is a little bit lighter. I just wanted to match it up a little bit more to the potato sack. Now, if I would have mentioned this to her, she would have absolutely have done this for me because she's just so gifted and talented, but... That was my bad. I just, I didn't, um, I didn't mention it to her, but no worries. I'm going to sh share with all of you this antiquing wax. Many of you have already seen me use this before several times, but for those of you that have not, you're in for a treat. It puts a wonderful aged look on whether it be wood or or metal or plastic for that matter. It is a wonderful, wonderful wax to use.
So again, what I'm trying to achieve here, as you can see to the left, I actually applied a little bit of the antiquing wax. Um, I'm just using a flathead brush here and trying my best not to get any of this on the burlap or I think I would just um, <laughs> scream, cry, just a little bit of everything. Um, anyhow, it's just as simple as brushing the glaze on and then wiping it off with a cloth. And you can go, you can repeat this process as many times as you like until you get the desired color that you're looking for. And again, I'm just looking to cover up all of the white. Now, originally this frame was cream. She ran out of the black frames, so she really, um, gosh, she did me such a huge favor by painting over this piece um, with the black color that I love to use so much. So at first, as you can see, I'm just dabbing it. And then I'll start doing a little bit more of a wipe. But it's warming up that white color right away and it is matching perfectly with the potato sack. And I think I just said burlap. And if I did, um, no, I meant to say um, potato sack. I really should be wearing gloves, but I figured, ah, uh, no, I'll just do without for right now. But see what a difference. And that is just one application. I actually placed two all around the frame. Just make sure to get in all those little cracks the best you can. And here we have the finished product. I'm in love. I just, I cannot believe that, I mean, what talent, you know, that individuals can pick up a paintbrush and make beautiful artwork like this. It has such a fabulous, primitive, old world feel to this, which mixes in perfectly with my French country. Always add in those special touches of primitive in French country decor. You will never be disappointed. Now I'm going to do just a little bit of the same thing on the yellow just to tone down the yellow a little bit. And you can see on the left hand side how I started the process. It's all about the warm colors for this girl. I just think that when warm colors are added in it truly does help the detail to pop out i mean just look at this how she painted these pumpkins on here and you have all the natural grain of the wood and the different knots going out and getting those 
you know, the, the handmade pieces, just nothing to me anyhow can, you know, really compare, can compare to this. I mean, just look, it just, it started off with this gorgeous piece of wood and she turned it into absolutely stunning. I just, I haven't been able to thank her enough. I absolutely love her work. Autumn Blessings. Now this next one I did already share in my previous haul, but if you have not watched that video yet, well, one, you really should because it's a great video. There is quite a bit of fall goodness inside that decor haul. But for those of you that are new, I wanted to share this as well. Comes from the same artist at the Minuteman Mini Mall. Again, ask for the manager. Let her know that the little blue fly sent you. And right now she's really getting that fall out there. She also does Christmas um, work as well. Now this is where the fun tra transformation begins. Look at this gorgeous, gorgeous rooster. That tail is just fanning out and this color just gives this piece no justice. I'm sorry. It would look at that happiness right there. You see that red mark right there? That means something wonderful. Clearance. This was purchased at the at home store. 50% off, so I ended up paying well, right around $56 for this piece. Um, many of you love to decorate, you know, with the lighter colors, you know, the, the and even the whites, and that's perfectly fine, but this girl over here, I like color, I like depth, and I am in love with detail. And this is what we are getting ready to do we are going to give this rooster some amazing depth and detail and i'm gonna i've never used this paint i just seen it at the mini man minute mall um, vintage market and design so everything in her booth well the paint was 50 percent off and i thought well i think this color burlap is going to help me achieve my French country look and it was 50% off of $5 so you can't beat 250 so I've never worked with this paint before so we're gonna find out how it goes just gonna shake give it a good shake up since it's so small and again, it's burlap. And oh yes, this screams French country. I believe this rooster is going to be very handsome when Beverly gets done with him. <laughs> I'm, I'm hoping. Let's snip this tag off and get started. Going to use a flathead brush. I do have one that is larger than this, but you know, everything's still hiding around corners and on shelves and in boxes, and I just didn't feel like going on the hunt. So we are just going to make do with this brush. I'm going to dab off a little. And I'm just going to brush over the top. And what happens is the pieces that are raised is they are going to grab on to the paint. And 
and the lower lying areas, they will stay white for right now. I'm going to share another um, technique with you in just a moment here. But right now I'm just adding in, um, when, I, when I do this part, it will make this burlap color um, just a little bit more um, visible versus when I use the same color but a different technique. So I'm going to try and I wanted all of you to really see the full process of this procedure here. Normally I just show little bits here and there, but I'm going to try to give you a little bit more just because this is such a, de a detailed piece. So now what I'm going to do, this is what I call, um, I'm sure it's my own words, but I call it paint and smear. Because <laughs> pretty much that's what I'm doing. I'm painting and I'm smearing, or we can call it paint and rub, um, whatever, but it's going to achieve the same exact thing. So I'm just going over with my paintbrush and then rubbing it with the cloth and it almost just reminds me of like a, a good old-fashioned shoe shine so just paint and then rub with your cloth and as we start making this white color go away and bring in some burlap you're going to start seeing a lot of the detail come out. So you see here on the front area, we have some color and the rest is still very much so white. <laughs> I'm just going to brush over all the feathers and I, I just, I couldn't wait to finish this piece, but I knew it was going to take some time because this is a very large rooster. So I'm just going to continue the process. Brush it on and then smear it with the cloth. I mean, isn't this just incredible? It, it's so fun to watch this piece transform with some warmth. Again, there's just beautiful, beautiful detail on this rooster. There was two of them actually up on the shelf. And the first one, I was like, I said, what? Clearance? Okay, 50%. And I grabbed the first one, but I'm glad I noticed at the bottom of its tail feather, it was broken off. And very easy to look over that. And I said, oh no, I'm so glad I noticed that. And I put it back up on the shelf and I looked at this one really, really good. And it was just perfect. There was nothing wrong with it. I really don't understand why um, they would clearance this with fall coming up. Because many of us use the roosters during fall decorating. So as you can see, some go really deep. And then it's just a process.
Here's the back side of the rooster. I'm gonna work at the top here a little bit. I'm trying to show you um, different areas on the rooster. Just smear it on. This is a very easy, easy project. I'm gonna work on these feathers as well. Again, try your best to get down, you know, in the grooves. Get some good shading going on. Okay, so I have the first part finished and that is adding on the burlap color. Now here is where all the major um, shading and detailing is going to come into play. And that is with Annie Sloan Dark Wax. She has clear wax, she has dark wax, and she has black wax. I really wanted a good aging, so that's where I thought dark would be the best on this piece. I'm just gonna use my round brush, these brushes, can be purchased at my Amazon storefront. And no worries, don't let this dark wax color fool you. Just get in all the grooves the best that you can. And I only did one application of this wax. And then you wipe off all of the excess after you apply it. So I'll show you around the bottom. The bottom is absolutely completed. It's giving me, oh gosh, it just, it takes my breath away a little bit. Such a beautiful um, French country and it, stone. It's giving a nice stone feel and look. And that's what I was hoping to achieve. Now we're going to work up that top. And again, just one application. Make sure to get in all of the different grooves. Now I also have a smaller brush that goes along with this one, but again, I cannot find it right now because Bev's house is a mess, so I'm gonna have to find something in order to get in there. but just continue to pay close attention to how all the detail is starting to show. Wax has to be one of the easiest things to work with. This is it. You apply and wipe off. And here I have the wax completely applied. Underneath there is just the burlap. 
There's little bits and pieces. I'm going to go in with a smaller brush and add on some wax. But what an absolutely gorgeous farmhouse to French country transformation. Trying to give you another view and I wanted to add some color up next to the rooster. Today's a it's completely cloudy outside here in Northern Virginia. And hot. Now I'm adding in the Autumn Blessing sign. And all these pieces just work so well with one another. We have the French country. We have the looks of primitive. Working on the wood. I love going out there and shopping for all these little extra pieces at thrift stores as well. This one right here um, was, I actually it was a find this week and they have a special dollar room and it was in there for just one dollar. Perfectly aged piece of copper. And another copper find. This is a matchstick holder. I paid five dollars for this piece and right here on the side that's where you actually strike your match. And this piece is just gonna work perfectly in with all of my decor. So again, these two were thrifted finds. And this is another thrifted find, um, a black teapot with some fun folk art painting on it. the warm um, oranges like the burnt oranges and the gold and this it can either be hung or placed flat on a shelf or in a basket you can let things come out from the lid They can be used in many different ways. And as you see, it just works well with all the others. Now let's add in some naturals. These are some natural dried gourds. And I purchased these at the Minuteman Mini Mall and she meant it. It says firm, $12. So I purchased them and I am going to share a link in my description box because these can be purchased um, from Amazon as well, but hurry up and get over there. Um, these are smaller bags for $9.99. Now the ones on my Amazon storefront, you will get more. Um, they do not have the smaller bags, but like I said, they are very limited. So you must get over there if you want some of these to purchase them. I actually purchased three bags and this is just chippy goodness right everyone have to love the chippy goodness this does have the look um, of primitive it of course is a reproduction there was no name on it from I tried finding it um, you know under primitive trays and just no luck and um, but I was able to find this one and I picked it up quite quickly. 
Perfect color, perfect chippiness. And now what I'm going to do is just put a very simple and easy arrangement together in this tray. I'm going to start with these um, mustard colored stems, mustard yellow. This was, they were also, they were purchased um, at the mini mall. And I have a little candle holder inside there and I'm just gonna open these up a little bit and I'm gonna place a couple over here to the right. You know, fall is such a, it's such a wonderful time. The weather starts to cool off the leaves start blowing across the lawns and the street and they just greet us with that French, the, the French, the fresh, just the, the cool breeze, What right? Getting away from all of that heat. We start smelling the fireplaces again. I love the fall season. Oh, sorry. I bumped the camera. Sorry about that. So always make sure to pull your floral stems apart. Sort of, you know, peel them back like a banana in a way. And then with your silks, always add the dried naturals. Over the past year and a half, I've been trying to share this with all of you that if you mix your dry florals with your silks, it helps make your arrangements look more natural. And no, Bev is not placing any moss in here today, but I will be. <laughs> That's for sure. And just add in different um, natural stems. This is actually my first um, little fall arrangement that I'm putting together. I'm enjoying this. Just gonna place one in the back. Now next, I'm just gonna be placing in these small gourds. Again, here we go, adding in some of the naturals. With the silks. I just try placing them in all different directions. And the next thing I'm going to add is this primitive candle. It is battery operated. Unfortunately, I don't have a link for this particular color, but I do have many of these candlesticks in my Amazon storefront. It's a fun way to decorate using these gives that nice old world primitive feel. I'm going to tuck it in that little candle holder in the back. And how precious is this? So simple, so easy. Just add in those special fall colors and some naturals and you have yourself a perfect little tray with a crooked candle right now. 
<laughs> but I'll, I'll be fixing that. Next, I have, I actually purchased two of these. This is, um, it's a primitive, it's a spiral candle holder. You can see here up at the top, it's bent. You can actually um, hang these from pictures. Let me get this candle situated over here. It's a, just another fun way to work with these candles you just simply place it right in and how wonderful is this Thank you. 